speaking with for the opportunity. I'm currently working, but I am looking at my other options. I think it's important to show that just because you're visually impaired or blind, don't be scared to put yourself out there. Um, I will admit, I had a couple of roadblocks that I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna go, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. A um, couple of those roadblocks were just getting my cover letter, my references, and my resume together. Um, I can't tell if they're in alignment, so I had to reach out to someone, um, have those documents sent to them. They looked at it, made some corrections, sent it back to me in my email. And then I got really self-conscious about my cane, about how they were perceiving just by looking at me. Um, I definitely did some research about the company. Um, I'm feeling nervous but pretty confident about the interview and I just hope they see me and my skills and look past the obvious. I want to be transparent. I don't want to be a closeted, visually impaired person. Um, I want them to know that I am what I am and I'm hoping they see me as an asset. But yeah, I came to the library right here and the librarian helped me, um, walked me to the computer, um, did the, scanned my library card. Um, I gave them access to my Gmail account, wrote down my password, they printed it off and um, I had my little change purse with me but if it's under a dollar, I guess it's free. And they printed it for me, I got my little folder with all the information here. Um, I did the references list uh, because obviously I'm a, I will be able to do the application. So I'm hoping all the information, the cover letter, the resume, and my list of references. I have a list of nine references, um, professional references that I've worked with. So I'm hoping that will be sufficient. So guys, if you are out there looking for work and you're disabled, don't be discouraged. Put yourself out there. You won't know until you try. So um, don't wish me luck. Um, luck is not part of it um, wish me kicking booty <laughs> alrighty bye um, as you can tell all my stuff is still in here so I don't want to talk about it now today has been a rough day I left to go to the library and print up all my stuff at 11.30 got picked up, took about 15-20 minutes to get all the stuff in the library, <clears throat> and called a lift, got picked up around 12.15, arrived at my location at 12.30, and left that location at 12.45. So, um, I don't, I don't want to talk about it right now, but I will come sit down in front of the camera and just share how that went. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to give you an update. It's later in the day, obviously. It's like around 11.30 at night. So, yeah. Okay. Hey guys, it's been a couple of days since um, the first clip I recorded regarding going to an interview. Um, let me preface and say that I love my current job, I love the company I work for, but this experience on going on an interview since my diagnosis and since living the life with a disability, I have to acknowledge a couple of things that I was extremely naive about. Um, so before I dive in about how I felt about that interview, uh, my experience and so forth and so on, I want to give you a little context. So the company I work for right now, I've been for with about seven years. I had full sight, um, functional sight when I started at this company and as my, um, my disease got worse, um, I was blessed um, an honor to give an opportunity to work within their innovation and design lab in regards to making a difference, um, having a mission, a purpose, and a passion really behind disability rights and disability being able to be employed. And I st so strongly still adhere to that mission, passion, and drive. Um, but I think I had a little bit of, not a little bit, a lot of privilege not understanding what people go through on a day-to-day -day basis facing other people's biases. And the reason I say I have a 
that unyoking privilege that I, I hate even the taste in my mouth or the filling is because I didn't have to I didn't have to be on the unemployment line or not have the period of not working. Um, when I got my disease, I was working and my company just worked with me. So I never had that experience of not ever being employed and putting myself out there and um, trying to find work. And I was naive about it, I mean, because this is my passion of disability rights that, hey, we just, that people need to see us more, they have to understand more, if they can see past whatever disability that we have, mentally, physically, whatever, if we can show them our skill set, then the rest will fall into place. And um, I got a, a really rude awakening on an interview that I went on recently. And I wasn't actively looking, at, like anybody else I'm sure, everybody has their resume and work history information on LinkedIn, Munster.com, those type of sites. So I got an email um, sent out to me, it's like, hey, we'd love to interview you. And I really loved, I researched this company, I really got attached to their message and their mission. Um, one of their um, chief brand and communication officer was quoted as saying, you know, we need to be inclusive. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but be inclusive. We must always look for opportunities to work with other different people that's different from us to understand and just be inclusive. And just their, their recent, um, developments of products regardless to disability insurance, things like that. It just really resonated with me for obvious reasons. So, I mean, I was prepared. I researched this company and my husband's out of town for his own work stuff. So I had to really, it took a lot of work to get there. You know, I had to uh, make sure that all my paperwork is all right, like my resume, my references, my cover letter. So I don't have a printer, so I had to get a lift to drive to the library, get inside the library without getting lost, getting to the desk of the librarian to then go to a computer to ask for help. The librarian then scanning my card, typing in my password um, to my um, Gmail account to print the documents. Then having that same library walk me to the door. And then for me to the door to the curb to get another Lyft driver to drive me um, 20 minutes to the location of where the interview was. My interview was at 1. Um, they told me to arrive 15 minutes early. So I actually got there at 12.30. And I was back on the curb in front of the building at 12.45. So obviously I didn't get an interview. What happened was, I got escorted from, I guess there was a, a police, like, floor, like an office there. So, I guess a policeman was in the lobby, so he was kindly enough to escort me up to this particular office. The minute I walked into the door, I could hear in a woman's voice. She saw my cane and she saw my glasses and that was it. She ha I handed her my resume, and I could hear in her voice she was extremely nervous, like she did not know what to do. Like, oh my god, this never happened to me before. So what I thought was unique about this situation was that, obviously, I looked, I hit it out of the park on what they were looking for, but the minute I walked in, she was faced and, and could not deny that I had some type of disability because I needed assistance to get to find their office and I had a cane and I was protecting my eyes from the sun with sunglasses. So she was very flustered and she didn't mean to say how it came out, but she's like, man, I don't think this job is for you. And the minute those words came out, my pride just took over because I've traveled so many places with my guide dog. I'm very capable of doing anything regardless of my visual impairment. So when those words came out and her bias and stereotype came out, and the next word was like, I guess we can interview you, but, and that's all she had to say. And my response to her was, I don't want to waste your dime or mine. Because if you already have that stereotype, I'm not here to try to talk you out of it because the interview is for naught. You already made your decision. I heard in your voice I, that exchange. I was extremely professional and um, 
the person that was supposed to interview me I asked for a sighted guy to lead me back to the curb and that was it but that was a bucket of cold water and realization for me of my privilege that people every day that are struggling to look for work that are not able-bodied if it's something that is physically detected that you have a disability it's so much harder to try to get past that because um, that's all people see first so they kind of internalize it and again this is just me trying to process it in my mind so of course when that ended after a 10 minute I mean, I had to call off of work. I used a vacation day. It took all that effort to, to get where I was going. I cried because I never realized the bias and, dis and I don't want to say discrimination because I, her heart was in the right place. Their heart was in the right place. I, they were just scared. They did not know how to handle the unfamiliar. But just realizing that's what people go through every day it's hard enough just to find a job just off your merit. But when you have that extra yoke of something being not normal with you because you're different from them, if you can't even get past that, you can't even get a freaking interview. If you post everything on LinkedIn and they just love everything on LinkedIn, your picture, everything, but then you come face to face with them that they, you have a disability, Whatever they say in their articles about being inclusive, that kind of goes out the window because it's different talking about being exclusive in a charity sense. Let's help people. Let me help you. Let me give you money. I can give you something and then you go away, right? Versus, oh God, they're going to work in my environment. They're different. How can they do what I do? They automatically um, internalize about, this is the job that we're asking for. I do this job with sight. How can someone do what I do without sight? And if you can't get past that roadblock, no matter what, you, you, can, you can go in an interview and knock it out the park. It's not going to change that first initial thought. That first initial thought is going to continue throughout the interview and as you walk out the door as they're throwing away your resume and the, the, the waste bin. So it was a really, really sobering moment in my life. And I'm trying to not let it to bother me. Like I said, I love the position I'm in. But I also wanted to prove to myself that if I wanted to explore and do something different, that I could. And this one experience, I'm not saying it's going to deter me, but it really made me afraid because it's like, now I understand if you're visually impaired, you know, employers are always posting articles about be transparent, tell us about your disabilities. It's not going to be used up against you. I can understand the other side if you are able to be a closeted blind person and hide the fact just to get your foot in a freaking door. I can't blame you for that because it's so freaking hard. They will look at you always, I do this job with sight, how can they do what I do without sight? So I was always like, I'm always going to be, I have no choice but to be honest and transparent because outside of my safety of my house and my yard, I need a cane or a guide dog or something to protect my eyes beyond my small realm. So it's always going to be a label that people will see on me first. I can't be closeted. But I can't blame uh, one of my low vision peers that can't hide it just to get in the door and get an opportunity to, to prove their value. So I'm not going to cry. I already did that. That's why I took a couple of days to get back on camera to talk about my experience. Tell me if you're visually impaired, if you're a closeted blind person, Tell me how you made the decision not to disclose it to your, your, your potential employer. Why did you do that? Or did you disclose it and then all of a sudden you didn't get the job? Or if you are a totally blind person that, that's currently, um, not even totally blind, but have any type of vision loss and you need some type of aids, if you use a cane, if you need a magnifier, if you need any type of um, modification to do your job, how would you get an interview without that bias? And I'm asking because I really want to know. 
Um, I mean, I'm not actively trying to quit my job or anything, but if I want to move on, like anyone else, they have the opportunity to expand their career, um, to be able to grow if they want to go to a d different look different avenue or a different way with their career, they have that opportunity to. Um, I just want to know what, how can, what do you guys do to get past that bias? So the interview was a bust. I wasted the whole day. I Sorry my camera cut off, but um, yeah, I, I do feel that resentment. I do feel that sadness and depression and hopelessness. And I'm going to have to process it. I mean, my current job right now, I'm just feeling so sad and I think it's because of that resentment of the other being different and I don't know I know I'm probably not a, a walk in the park to work with right now because I just don't want to talk to people that what's your purpose what's your mission what's your passion I don't care about the small talk I want to know the meat of it what what is behind the facade what do you really mean and I just I just don't have time for <laughs> fakeness and I'm not saying people are being fake but when all you have is auditory and all you hear is like privilege 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 and it's just like I'm done <laughs> I can't engage in this conversation because it has no meaning to me <laughs> and again not everyone's gonna care what I care about I understand that but I need to process it and not internalize in a way that I'm so resentful and so angry at everybody, but to be able to process it and turn it around and make it, I don't know, to some, make my lemons into some lemonade is just really hard right now. So I just want to come on camera and be candid about it and please definitely share your experience down below because sometimes when you have a disability and you're not surrounded by people like you, you, it can be very isolating and it'd just be nice to hear other people's stories to know that I'm not alone. Um, I just hate feeling alone and I think that's where my resentment's coming from. Is that everyone around me is sighted and I just feel so alone because they don't understand what I'm going through. And because of that misfiring of under trying to understand each other, I'm just getting so resentful and so angry. Hell, I would love to have another blind girl in the office. <laughs> Why can that not happen? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off because I hate camera crying on camera. So love you guys. See you next week. And like I always say, be you, stay true, and be naturally seen. Bye, guys. <laughs>